Hi, this is Ben Lowell, and this is Back to the Bible Canada's Truth in Life today with Dr. John Newfeld. John, welcome. Thank you. This is going to be a great program. It right? is going to be a great program. We have our friend Mark Warwa, who is a, uh, an MP with the federal government, and he's going to be joining us today to talk about uh, his own experience of calling mm -hmm. uh, to politics. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to talk about that, his ups and downs in politics, some of the things he's been involved in. But also just his, that, that sense of faithfulness yeah. that we all need to have in respect of wherever God places us. Uh, but right now, I want you to take us to the Word. Yeah, we're going to talk about our holy calling today. Um, we're not just going to talk about politics, although we are going to talk about Christians involved in politics. But we're going to spend some time talking about every single believer in Christ. They have a holy calling of God. So let me begin by reading a passage of Scripture. It's taken from uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 4. So let me read this passage to you. As you come to him, a living stone, rejected by men, but in the sight of God, watch this, chosen and precious, that's who Jesus is. You yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Now, just a little ways further down, uh, Peter reiterates that. So let me read that portion to you. It's, it's verse 11 of the same chapter. Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. So we're called upon this living priesthood to live with integrity, recognizing that we have a holy calling of God. Now, there's been a misunderstanding in the Christian church, especially through the Middle Ages. This truth was forgotten. We talked about, you know, priests having a holy calling, and that was it. Everyone else had a secular calling. So we made a distinction between the holy calling and the secular calling, and we divided all Christians into these two different subcategories. Now, please don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I do think the calling to be a pastor is a very special place in God's kingdom. We're called upon to teach and to preach the word of God so that every single believer would be uh, equipped to have everything that they need to do the work of God. Now, having said that and having acknowledged that, let me also say that every single believer has been called to a holy calling. It's called the priesthood of all believers. It doesn't matter whether or not you're a pastor or a plumber or a politician or a, new, uh, or a newspaper, uh, somebody who writes in newspapers or somebody who's involved in, in teaching at a number of different locations. Whatever your calling is, it is a holy calling because we infuse Christ into the center of all of that. See, let me take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Watch carefully what Paul the Apostle says. This is how one should regard us. He talks about himself as an apostle, as servants of Christ, watch this, and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. And then Paul goes on to apply that to every single one of us. And the word here is the word stewardship. Now, I think if you've been raised in church, you know that whenever you talk about stewardship, we talk about giving and financial responsibility and making sure that we are giving generously and sacrificially and all that stuff's good. But stewardship is something else. In the ancient world, there's an owner of a household and there's a steward who's been called to be a, a household manager. That is, you know, the, the nobility owns the place, but the steward is called upon to look after the owner's goods, to make sure that everything is running well. And so what Paul is saying that it, no matter what your calling is, you are a steward. So if you are a, a, a carpenter, you know, your, your calling is to represent Christ in your profession in such a way that the gospel of Jesus is going forward. So you ought to view your carpentry skills as a holy calling. It doesn't matter whatever you do. If you're a mom who's a stay-at-home mom, and your task is to full-time raise your kids. That's a stewardship. That's a sacred calling. That's a priesthood that God has called you to. The same is also true of politicians. And I know that in our country and in the entire Western world, we've kind of thought about politicians as a dirty business. And we've looked at it as, you know, how do you know that a politician is lying? We say, well, their lips are moving. And we have all sorts of jokes about politicians. 
And we view the, the idea of becoming a politician as somebody who is a reprehensible person. Listen, God also calls his own people to be politicians. You want examples of that? Daniel in Babylon is a politician. He serves as a man who is under the king of Babylon. And remember, Babylon is an unrighteous nation. Babylon attacked Jerusalem, burned the city down, and killed a number of its inhabitants. In fact, they decimated the holy people of God. And Daniel, within that context, is called to be a politician, an individual who not only is faithful to Babylon and blesses it, but also every morning opens up his window and looks towards Jerusalem and prays towards it, remembering that his hope ultimately is not in Babylon, but is in Jerusalem. And in the end of the day, when Daniel's enemies want to take him down, they find that he has been faithful to the kingdom in everything except in relationship to his God. That was the only place that they had found a place to accuse him. I think what I learned from that is you can be faithful to Christ in any secular environment whatsoever. You can never give up your holy calling. You can remain truthful. You can remain faithful to the Lord Jesus. And you can be effective in the work in which you were called. And in that work, you can make an impact on the nation in which we live. What we need more than anything else, we need believers in Jesus who are in all professions. We need believers in, as, in the university positions as university professors, in the newspapers and in the media, in politics. Uh, we need uh, in, in police officers and in all manner of other places, uh, whether it's civic politics or national politics, we just need believers who are integrous to Christ in the midst of their calling. And God will open up the door. This is what our stewardship is. God owns the world. He owns our country. It's all his. He's entrusted to us to be faithful to him in whatever thing that he calls us to do. So rejoice. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ today, you are on assignment from God. Be faithful where he has called you. And as you are faithful in little, in the end of the day, he will put you in charge of much. Hi, and welcome back to Truth and Life Today with Dr. John Newfeld and our special guest, Mark Warwa. Mark, thanks so much for joining us today. And uh, we have a great opportunity here. Now, let me introduce you a little bit more. Now, you are actually, or were, a representative in Abbotsford, British Columbia, is where I live. And uh, that was in 1990, you became uh, part of the council there. I did. And then in 2004, you took the mighty leap to federal politics and became an MP, and you've been an MP ever since. And I think you mentioned 14 years of municipal politics and now celebrating 14 years as an MP. And uh, we want to thank you, first of all, thank you. for your service and for all that you've done to uh, represent the Lord in all that you do uh, in Ottawa and in your constituency here. But let's start out with the fact that, you know, we believe strongly that people are called to ministry, called to service. I know typically, right, we think about uh, pastors and things of that nature being called, and often that's how people think about it, a specific calling to ministry. But you feel very called to what you do. Describe that for me. I do. Um, and Ben, thank you. And John, uh, it's it wonderful to be here with you. Um, my, my introduction to politics was a dream. Uh, I had a dream in 1990. There was a municipal election coming up. And, and I had a dream, and it was that I was uh, elected. And um, very, it was a very vivid dream. And it was later that day at, um, when I was out in, the, out in the community that somebody called my name and said, Mark, I had a dream about you last night. And I said, well, what, what was it? And they said, well, you were elected in the, in the upcoming election. And I wasn't even running at the time uh, or even considering it, but that changed. Uh, yeah. You know, God speaks to us in very different ways. Uh, and I, I haven't had a, a dream calling uh, since then, but I definitely hear him. Uh, and, um, but that's what got me into politics in the first place in 1990 was a dream. 
And um, it's been a, an incredible honor. Um, and if we keep on listening, um, God will speak to us and direct us. And there's no more exciting of a life than the life of a Christian. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You know, we've had the opportunity to talk to Ed Fast as well yes, a, a we few months ago, and he's a great friend. But I'm interested in this, this calling thing because I think so many people, like I say, think of it as being specific to ministry. Uh, but you're ministering yourself in, in that respect. So how would you describe your calling into politics? Well, when I entered politics, people would ask, uh, after I was elected in 1990, they said, well, wh what is your mandate? What are you going to work on? And, and I was focused on um, whatever God called me to do. And, and often you're really not sure what that is. And, and he equips you. If you look back at your life, wow, yes, he did prepare me for that. Yeah. And um, so when I went into federal and um, when I was on city council in Abbotsford for 14 years, uh, it was all local issues and it started off with exotic dancing, uh, yeah. came into Abbotsford and, and I thought, well, that's not right. And I talked to Mayor George Ferguson, can I work on that because it's not good for the community? And so he said, yes. And so I was able to work with council members and, and get rid of that in Abbotsford. But federally, um, I had great interest in transportation safety and justice issues and the environmental issues. And, um, but I, um, I had a, a constituent come into the, to our office and you, you work as a team. And, um, and we had then a constituent come in and saying, I have a dying relative. Mm -hmm. And that dying relative, um, and she was from uh, the Okanagan, and she said, somebody needs to take care of her. And my sister has, is, uh, is, is dying, and she was taking care of mom, so I need to take care of her. And the government program re, um, excluded a sister taking care of a sister. It's called compassionate care benefits. And so, so I, we met with staff, we prayed, and, and is this what we're supposed to work on? Everybody, yes. Uh, we just knew it in our heart. And so it was a two-year project, but we changed the requirements to qualify for compassionate care. Uh, and that's what God called me to. And it was, it was so clear, uh, but it, it started with somebody coming in the office. And so uh, God continues to speak to me in, so, uh, in different ways, but you know it's God. Uh, you know in your heart if you're prayed up and you're relying on him to direct your path, and he does lead, he wow. does speak to us. That's fantastic. John, when it comes to calling then, how would you define calling? Well, I think everyone has an assignment from God. Okay. Um, God has called us. I mean, one of the remarkable things about the Protestant Reformation is that we came to realize that a holy calling is not, as you've already said, reserved for the clergy class. Okay. But everyone, as we are a royal priesthood, have been called upon by God to further the gospel in whatever area of life we're in, whether we are a a pastor or a plumber or a politician. Although I must say, Mark, as we've been talking about politicians, I mean, the scripture has some very key things to say about politicians, doesn't it? I mean, Romans 13, uh, politicians, even non-Christian ones, are called servants of God. Mm -hmm. So, and the word for servant there is the word diakonos, deacon. Uh, the same word that we use in the church when we talk about someone who serves in a given area. So it seems to me that not only is there the individual calling, but scripture itself designates this as a calling. I don't know whether you feel that way. I, I, I appreciate that because uh, we are, I believe we are called. Um, and there is a responsibility that I have to, to determine what, what that calling is. And um, uh, I, I forget the verse, but it's that the names are evil. Uh, be wise, know what the will of God is. And so, and, and that calling, uh, when you finish that, that job that you're working on, what is the next calling? And, uh, and so, yes, I have a responsibility to hear from God. If God put me there into politics, then what has he called me to do? And it doesn't matter if it's politics um, or any vocation that God exactly. has called you. Um, what has God got you there for? Uh, who are you supposed to meet and bless, build a relationship with, and show the love of Christ? And, uh, and mine is in politics in Ottawa, and it's an incredible honor to be an ambassador, not only a politician, but an ambassador for Jesus Christ in Ottawa. Yeah. yeah. John, how would you encourage somebody or anybody uh, in respect to calling? You know, one of the things that I always say to people that 
make sure that you remember that you're a servant of Jesus first. I mean, in terms of politics, I would always say Daniel is the example, is a great example of an individual in the end of the day who served in Babylon and was faithful to the land in which he served. And yet every single morning he, he opened up his window and looked towards Jerusalem because ultimately that's where his hope lay. So I think we serve effectively in our calling here, but we never lose the greater calling, which is I'm called to Christ and to the to the eternal kingdom. Amen, amen. You know, we're gonna talk a little bit more after the break about maybe some of the challenges of being called to politics. I wanna thank you for being here, and remember, join us again in just a few moments for more of Truth In Life today. Welcome back to Truth and Life today with Dr. John Newfeld and our special guest, Mark Warwa. Mark, Thank great you. to have you again. You know, this is a, a bit of an exciting topic to me because I realize that, you know, uh, God uses people in all kinds of different ways, and we really want to encourage people that God is calling them to, to service and to be his servant. Uh, John, before we uh, went to break, you were describing Daniel a little bit. Maybe carry on with that conversation a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, Daniel was living in Babylon. I'm gonna argue, Mark, what's Canada? Canada's Babylon. We're not Jerusalem, we're Babylon. Mm -hmm. um, however, uh, Daniel is faithful in the context that he's placed in, so that in the end of the day, when they want to roast him, they can find nothing against him except in his relationship to his God. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's authentic and he's honest in his dealings. But one of the things, Ben, that really struck me about Daniel is how his career, you know, has these high moments, you know, during the time of Nebuchadnezzar. I mean, he's the sought after man in the kingdom. And yet during the time of Belshazzar, he's on the sideline. But whether he is the man who is at the center of attention or the man who is considered as, you know, yesterday's man, yeah. he remains a faithful servant of God. God in his sovereignty puts us in exactly the position where he wants us. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mark, have you experienced those ebbs and flows in politics that Daniel did? Uh, absolutely, and, yeah. and um, I, uh, I introduced a motion uh, in the last parliament, uh, and it was to condemn the practice of sex selection. Yeah. And uh, nobody wanted that dealt with, uh, none of the parties. In and, abortion, yes. Yes, uh, and that people choose to end a pregnancy, to have an abortion, because it's a girl. And there's over 200 million missing girls in the world right now because uh, and it makes the world very, very dangerous when you have this gender imbalance. So I introduced a motion. Nobody wanted to, to deal with that. And so um, I was the, the chair of the Standing Committee on Environment. That was removed from me, and I was put in the back bench because of that and paid a price. And that's okay. because I had peace because uh, I knew this is what I was supposed to do, and that was the consequences. And it was the, the clash of the kingdoms, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world. Anyway, the, the new parliament, 42nd, um, after the election of 2015, uh, we have a, a new leader, Ron Ambrose. Uh, she was the temporary leader, and we had the Carter decision on assisted suicide, had to come up with legislation, and I was then asked, because of the stand I had, the Christian stand, they were looking for a member of parliament that would prov provide a perspective of life, honoring God, and so I was on the legislative committee um, and trying to bring balance to the legislation and, and the recommendations of what assisted suicide would look like. So what an incredible honor. Um, if you're not looking at, to advance your own career, just trust God. Yeah. He does use you. Uh, the minute pride gets in the way, God can't use you. So you have wow. to be patient and wait, and, and God will use you if you're willing. Well, that's Joseph, isn't it? I mean, Joseph's in prison. Uh, had he not gone to prison, I don't think he would have become the prime minister of Egypt. Um, what an amazing reversal, simply because he's known to be a man of faithfulness. And that, that's really the calling that all of us have. And, and I think about working. Paul in prison yeah. in Philippi. And, 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 you know, the fact that he could count it all joy, he said, you know, because he knew something was coming of this, even though you and I might look at it and say, what possible good could come of Paul being in prison? Yeah, and as a matter of fact, the Roman Praetorium heard the gospel. Had he not gone to prison, that would never have happened. Right? Yeah, all these political connections, yeah, right? Absolutely. All these oh, po the <laughs> politics in the Bible. See, that's the thing. Yeah. You know, for people who say, you know, I want to wash my hands of politics, kind of a dirty business, and what's a Christian got to do in that kind of stuff? If we read our Bible closely, we're going to find more political connections, I think, than we had ever imagined. Yeah. 
and we'll find out that God's people are constantly there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Mark, how do you deal with some of the, the faith challenges of being in politics? Do you ever feel like you're being pulled in different directions? I, I am so thankful that there are a number of Christians in the parliament and, and you find uh, who they are and denominations mean nothing when yeah. you're on the mm. front lines of the That's battle. Right. Yeah. And um, so whether uh, my brother or sister in Christ is, is a Catholic or a Baptist or a Mennonite or reform, whatever, that we, that we, we pray for one another, we encourage one another and, um, and we make a difference and we challenge one another to represent Christ in the parliament uh, and to really serve our community well, yeah. to, do, to run the race. And, and so yes, there will be challenges. There's challenges wherever we are, whatever we're doing. Um, if we are standing up for Christ, standing up for truth and righteousness, there will be pushback, there will yeah. be suffering. But um, God said that he will work everything together for good. So in spite of all of that, it's a, a great joy to be yeah. there. You know, we had mentioned earlier uh, in our own conversations that uh, you had viewed the Paul Chamberlain interview we had and your connection with that. Give us a little bit of a sense of your connection with the whole maid uh, uh, issue. Well, um, it was, I was asked by Ronnie Ambrose to, to lead in the drafting of the legislation. And um, it was phys called Physician Assisted Suicide and in the Criminal Code, Assisted Suicide in Euthanasia. And the, the, uh, the, those that are pushing for this and, and where we are isn't good enough. They want it wide open, they want it encouraged, they want people to be able to end their lives prematurely through the use of assisted suicide in euthanasia. And, and so uh, they changed the language and they're calling it um, medical aid in dying. Well, palliative care, where you deal with the pain, both physically and mentally and spiritually, there's wonderful palliative care that could address that pain. And so they wanted to cause confusion and they're calling assisted suicide medical aid in dying. And they see palliative care as the enemy. And so that's what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. uh, a great honor to work on palliative care, making sure that every Canadian that needs it has access to palliative care. Yeah, that's fantastic, Amen. fantastic. Wow. You know, uh, John, just uh, as we, we conclude uh, today's program with Mark, I'm just thinking about calling. And how would you encourage uh, those that are thinking, you know, a calling is for other people, it's not for me? Yeah, it's just, it, it, to me, it's troubling when believers say, I'll just fall into a job, you know, and instead of pleading with the Lord and saying, God, show me what my life's about. Uh, how can I live in such a way that maximizes uh, the benefit to the kingdom of God and uh, can also bring Christ's gospel to the land in which I'm living. I would argue Christians need to be in politics. We need to be in, in journalism. Yeah. We need to be in our educational structures. My, we need to permeate every area in this land for yeah. the gospel of Jesus Christ. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mark, thanks so much for being with us today. We really appreciate you and all the service you've given. And, and I know uh, in a few short months, well, maybe 18 months or so, uh, there'll be another election. We'll be praying for you and the choices you need to make and that God would continue to direct your calling. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ben. Thank yeah. you, John. And uh, remember to join us in just a couple more minutes as uh, Dr. Neufeld comes back and we talk a little bit more about our takeaways from today's time right here on Truth and Life Today. Hi, and welcome back to Truth and Life today. Uh, John, we had a great opportunity to visit with Mark Orwa, and uh, so impressed by him. And you know, a few months ago, we also had the opportunity to meet with Ed Fast. Mm -hmm. And these are just, just men of God that are, are seeking to uh, be faithful to him. And we need to be praying uh, for those men amongst other uh, women who represent us in federal politics and municipal politics, provincial politics. But a wonderful conversation anyways. But what are some of the takeaways that, that you've identified in that conversation? Well, for me, the primary one that sticks with me is the, the story that Mark told about uh, you know, putting forward a bill on uh, ending selective, gender-selected abortions. Yeah. And because of the backlash being relegated to the netherworld and the yeah. political world, and yet being remembered as a man of integrity so that when we're looking around for someone who can have integrity on a very sensitive issue, yeah, we remember him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the whole idea of uh, faithfulness to God 
first, regardless of the consequences. Yeah. And then no matter where God has put us, remembering to be faithful, even if we're relegated to the back benches. Yeah, isn't that interesting? And I think of that, I think in my own life sometimes, you sort of feel like sometimes you're unjustly pushed aside. Yes. Uh, but what God is commending of you is that you would simply be faithful and obedient. He's going to take care of all the rest. Yeah, be faithful wherever God has put you. Never stop being faithful. Make your hope in God and not in popularity. Yeah, and the other thing he mentioned was about calling, and I think this is important. Calling is really for everyone. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's another takeaway. It's a great takeaway, right? I mean, Mark feels it's a calling of God. And I would argue, so ought to a carpenter, a plumber, a university professor, whatever we're doing, do it to the glory of God. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much for joining us here again today on Truth and Life Today. And remember to join us again next week as we have another wonderful interview in store for you. And I look forward to see you then. <laughs>